Welcome to Olmstead Point in Yosemite National Park in California. We're actually high above Yosemite Valley looking down. The prominent point town there is a half dome. A little different view of half dome than maybe you're used to. And then just below it to the right is Yosemite Valley. This is maybe one of my favorite places in Yosemite, um, not just for the, the views and the scenery, um, but some of the great spectacular geology that's exposed here. Thanks for joining me on this beautiful day. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, just out here um, checking out the rocks, looking at the landscape, and sharing a little bit, bit of it with you. So hopefully you appreciate that. So let's start with um, the rocks here. And, you know, Yosemite, I think most people know that the Sierras and the Yosemite are an area of granitic rocks, but the granites aren't all the same and they weren't all intruded at the same time or in the same locations. And so as you look around different parts of Yosemite, if you look at the rocks closely, you'll sometimes see very different rock types. And what we have here is a igneous rock that's known as Half Dome Granodiorite. So that's the formal name for this. So this is a lovely um, Granodiorite. It has and it's a granodiorite that actually fits between granite and diorite on our spectrum of igneous rocks. So it's got more dark, what we call mafic minerals than you would see in a classic granite. You can see these long skinny needle-like crystals of um, hornblende or amphibole in here. And there's just enough of it that it makes it a little bit different rock uh, than granite. So it's a little bit more mafic with these dark minerals than uh, a granitic rock. Um, but some other cool things that we see in the rocks is there are zones where the magma is more uh, mafic rich. And so right here, let me come around to this other side, um, is a zone where you can see the granite changing quite a bit, or the granodiorite, excuse me, changing. You can see as I move this way, the percentage of mafic minerals increases by the time we get into here this little zone is probably more of a true diorite uh, than granodiorite it's kind of equally salt and pepper dark and light colored minerals and then you get back out of it over there there's a nice sharp contact along the edge of it so imagine again these magma bodies um the chemistry is changing a little bit there's places where the there's more elements of one type versus another uh, over here we get a really nice section of, let me get up here so you can see better where these horn blends are quite large so you can see these um, big kind of rectangular needle-like shapes in here so really good display of these crystals in here so the other great thing about the half dome granodiorite is it also contains um, these xenoliths of other rock types so here's a dark rock that was entrained and embedded in the magma and incorporated in it um, before it cooled and crystallized. There's another one right here, right next to a nice patch of glacial polish. We've got glacial polish here with the striations, uh, then a xenolith. So let's move more towards the landscape now, now that we've looked a little bit at the rocks, and we'll probably jump back and forth because the two are somewhat intertwined here. Um, but these big boulders sitting out on the surface, um, these were carried by the glaciers. These are erratics. So these were carried as the ice moved from the east down into Yosemite Valley to the west. We literally had hundreds, maybe a few thousands of feet of ice moving across this terrain, um, polishing the rock, leaving the glacial striations. But then also as the glaciers retreated and receded, leaving big boulders like this one here out on the landscape. Now, most of these boulders look like they're pretty much the same rock type. So it's the same um, half dome granodiorite that makes up the bedrock. But if you look closely, you sometimes see ones that are a little different. So over here, this rock is very noticeably much darker than the rest of the rock beneath it. And so 
this to me looks like it's maybe got lichen on it but it might be a little bit different uh, rock as well so we might find some different ones as well let's see what else we have in here let's head over this way so more glacial polish um, the xenoliths all these glacial erratics there's a really a couple of really big ones here behind the trees just a sort of a wonderland of uh, all sorts of things oh this is pretty cool here here's another uh, xenolith but this one's incredibly loaded with dark colored mafic minerals big hornblende crystals like throughout and again this I can't tell this actually might not be a xenolith this might just be a little zone in the granodiorite where you had a high concentration of the um, dark colored mafic minerals with the biotite because as I'm looking at the margin it doesn't look sharp it looks more gradational more irregular to some degree so I think that's what that is there but then over here some more xenoliths sometimes these protrude out of the rock uh, because they're harder than the surrounding rock um, another cool feature we can see up at this point that's common in all granitic rocks is exfoliation so you can see these big fractures or joints forming in the rock these are called uh, exfoliation joints so remember this magma formed or this rock formed as magma deep underground and so it had the pressure of all the rock above it on the sides of it and below it and now and then that magma cooled and solidified to form the granite and now this rock is up at the surface there's no pressure on it except the atmosphere and so the rock actually expands outwards and so it actually exfoliates over time sheds the outer layer and in so doing it creates these fractures or joints there in the rock we can get a really nice view of the exfoliation process which shapes Yosemite in the Sierra looking across the valley here um, hopefully you can see up this slab and straight across there's these concentric little thin layers it's almost like an onion layer being peeled uh, off and those are all exfoliation joints those will eventually uh, continue to expand break off rocks will slide down the hill at some point uh, of course the process can be accentuated by um, freeze thaw cycles in the rock that can uh, get things going a little bit quicker um, let's see let's go a little bit further here I could just spend half the day or more just wandering around this awesome landscape more looks like it's more similar looking back up here we can see the nice dome profile uh, modified by the ice and then looking back to the east we can see some of these domes as well that were um, sculpted by ice but some of these are also exfoliation domes so as this exfoliation process occurs it tends to make the landscape look more rounded so the shapes you're seeing are partially due to um, ice yes this is looking up towards Tanaya Lake I can see the lake now but also um, the way that the granite weathers over time a uh, nice little patch here of with a nice big uh, more mafic xenolith this one has a more discrete margin on it and then a uh, nice freshly exposed granodiorite and then you can see where it's a little bit more weathered uh, it develops a little bit more of a pinkish color so here it is fresh more white and here it is a little bit more weathered with this pinkish um, rind on it S sexy rocks all the way around let's go up a little bit further maybe take in one more spot and then uh, we'll call it good you can see the rocks even weather into this rounded shape to some degree as well more of the exfoliation going on right here with these cracks there's one down here one just above it you 
Yeah, maybe we'll end down here, uh, down by this tree, looking down towards Half Dome. More of the glacial erratics. Uh, some really nice glacial polish right here. And some, some crude striations, hopefully you can see that. That little patch. So much to see, so much to take in. My first time in Yosemite was when I was about uh, eight years ago. And every time I come back, I'm like, gosh, I need to spend more time here. So we'll go ahead and call that good. But this has uh, been a fun little video of the just amazing landscapes and geology here at Olmsted Point in Yosemite National Park.